Uh, well, let's try and get some clarification on what the Foreign Office has uh, told us this evening. Jamie Kerr is an immigration lawyer and a partner at Thornton's. Jamie, a very good evening to you. Uh, I'm just looking at this statement from the Foreign Office. The key line, in a sense, and it's, it's been emboldened in the, in the uh, type just to underline the point. It says, if you are a dual citizen of one of those countries travelling to the US from outside uh, these countries, the seven Muslim majority countries identified, then the order does not apply to you. So, I mean, the way we're writing this this evening is that, for instance, if you're Nadim Zahawi, you're a dual national, you've got a UK passport, you've got an Iraqi passport, and you're travelling from London to see relatives in America, it's OK. You'll be able to do that. Try and make that journey from Baghdad, and it starts to get trickier. I think that would be welcome news if that were to be the case. But uh, what we've not seen yet is clarification from the United States government, that's from the UK Foreign Office. I think what's been perfectly clear over the entire weekend is that there's real confusion over who the uh, order of President Trump actually applies to. And that confusion extends almost city by city, airport by airport. It depends where you land and when. Yes, and, and, and from breaking news in, in the States, it appears that um, different airports are, are taking a different approach. But from a, a strictly legal viewpoint, we would be advising nationals of those seven countries uh, to think very carefully before they travel, certainly if they're uh, dual British nationals or if they are British nationals who were simply born in those countries, they might not have a second passport. We would be advising them to think very carefully about travelling to the US at this point in time. Jamie, have you talked to, been in communication with counterparts in the US? Do you have a sense of just how revolutionary this is? I think I, I did speak to one US um, immigration lawyer um, who was um, surprised that the order came in so quickly without any um, advance notice, didn't allow people to prepare. I think it is revolutionary to was the extent that, that the there's point, so many though, countries Jamie, on was, it. Wasn't that the point? I mean, apart from, you know, presumably a bit of... Uh, political theatre, uh, this was something he claimed to have a mandate for, there may have also been a sense in which they wanted to bring it in very quickly so that people couldn't, you know, circumvent it if they had some notice, some warning. Yeah, but I think what we've also got to remember is that there are uh, students included in that, business people, investors, entrepreneurs. An order like this is very damaging to the economy if it's not clear at the very outset that... Um, people who perhaps own properties, run businesses, employ lots of people um, are, are, are not being exempted from the order. It would appear at this stage to apply to, to everyone from, from those seven countries. Uh, that, that's going to be very damaging to the US if that is the case. Jamie, do we see in this, uh, since the executive order was uh, released on Friday, do we see in this some clues as to how the next four years may unfold in the sense of uh, lawfare is how the Americans call it, this idea of lawyers getting involved in, in, uh, in political arguments to resolve political arguments. I mean, this is something that's going to run on and involve hundreds of lawyers for, for months to come. Yeah, and, and, and people will criticise lawyers for becoming involved and, and making things uh, complex. But, but sometimes in situations like this, lawyers are the last bastion to be to be called upon. The first people that will be called in these situations are lawyers, not because um, people want to, or lawyers want to complicate the situation, simply because the rule of law demands that there's a fair system, one where what the rules are are clear, they are clear in, in advance, people can go about their daily lives knowing what the, what the law is going to be, it doesn't change overnight. And, and I think lawyers have got a very important role, and certainly in the US at the moment lawyers will appear to be taking the forefront on almost all the issues of the day if the president continues to act in this manner. Jamie Kerr, appreciate your time tonight. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. It's a story